May 29th, Rotoball Patch Compound, standing at the stop sign patch. We're going to look at these gals up here, walk down the main patch. We're going to talk about some tea production <laughs> and uh, EC and how I use it to measure things going on in my patch. Top of the key, Rotoball Main Patch Compound, looking at the 1707.5 Caspers. This is the one that Pete grew his dandy off of last season. Good secondary production stretching out past the fabric. We will have vines buried, secondaries buried completely at the nodes next video, which is nice. I'll be sweeping these bad boys back like I normally do. The first four to five on each side and then running the next four to five on each side out in like a spider pattern. Hope to have a fruit on this gal sometime middle of June. She's a big plant. She'll be ready for it. Have my EC meter. Just turn that bad boy on. I'm gonna test the soil. I suspect we're gonna see anywhere from 0.5 to 0 0.8. Yeah, 0 0.58, 0 0.59. Pretty good rain today. 0.6. Creeping up just a hair. 0.61. Every plant's a little bit different on what kind of EC I expect to see with what I'm hitting it with. Ruby last year, I had a 1.8 underneath of it. Of course, we didn't have a stump to feed it, so I ran a little bit heavier concentration, just trying to make sure there's plenty available to the plant. 0.8 uh, is, is probably ideal for my grow from what I've seen so far. 0.6 is a little bit lacking. These girls are young and hungry. So we're gonna bump them up a little bit more over the next few days. The 1965.5 rotoball, pretty similar to the Casper's plant, size and dimensions. One notable difference is leaf stalks, uh, generally a little bit touch bigger, maybe four to six inches bigger on our largest leaf stalks. Secondary production is pretty solid. Past the fabric, ready to be buried in a few days. Main vines clean all the way down through there. Nice, good, airy plant already. I'll have to get some stump covers on these gals soon. So far, early one like this, not a big deal. My magnesium's not pulling up like I'd like to see it. I kind of look at that leaf and go, yeah, a little bit more magnesium wouldn't hurt. I have hit them with cow mag. I think these early growth phases, this is like you can't keep up unless the soil's there. Now my soil temperature's all right. That little meter tells the soil temperature as well. So, I mean, we're 20.08 or 20.8 degrees Celsius. That's, that's about 70 degrees. Now that's only, you guys, that's only a couple inches deep. So a little bit lower than that. We're probably cooler, probably cooler by a few degrees at least. Once the temperature of the soil gets up in the 70s, at least during the daytime, it'll start pulling a little bit more magnesium, I imagine. Nice plant. Yeah, grow you sweet thing. Tomato box. Check out those tomatoes, Ethan. Yeah, we'll catch you, buddy. Done a little bit of selective pruning already. Probably gonna need to do a little bit more. But I'm overall happy with my tomatoes. They got a long ways to go up those T-posts, but they'll get there. Just takes a little time. Called down to one ruby plant. Got her buried on a few nodes. Still a very small squat plant. Warmer temperatures, she's gonna start to take off. And the 14, well, excuse me, 1143.5 pal. Same song and dance called down to one plant. That's where the other one was. This is the one that had the early double. It's fine. Actually got squashed at the tip, which is funny. That's not ever gonna get pollinated. I'll peel that gal off as soon as it gets dried up in this patch again. Pleased with it. We're gonna have a nice little green squash to show Mr. Pal. Look into the landing strips from this angle. A little bit of greenery you see in the patch is mostly mustard. And I put a mustard cover, you can see right there where I have a hula hoed around my landing strip. And I figured I'd rather hula hoed mustard up than I would weeds. And I'd rather fight mustard than I would weed, weeds. My goodness, there's sunshine, guys. I, I don't get this very often. I'm gonna enjoy looking at shadows of things. There's my shadow, woo, sunshine. It feels good on my skin. Grow my pumpkins. 
no it's just been a very overcast two or three days at least so it's nice to get out here for five seconds and actually film something maybe see a little bit of photosynthesis happening so i'm brewing some tea this year first time i've ever done a biological additive that wasn't pre-packaged i'm growing my own so to speak i've got a hundred gallon rubber made tote a nice little pond pump that just circulates the water hits my homemade t-shirt tea bag <laughs> yeah t-shirt tea bag which i've bound the holes of the sleeves together and filled full of all sorts of goodies to grow that bacteria matter of fact you can kind of see the white junk on it already which is nice as the bacterial colonies escaping my Hanes t-shirt of old water should be about i don't know 65 degrees or so maybe just a hair under hair over ec of that water should be 0.2 to 0.4 tops it's not a big heavy nutrient rich solution the nutrients are there more to feed uh, the amino acids to the bacteria to help them grow. So what's in the bag? What's in the bag, Doc? <laughs> yeah, so what's in this bag? Uh, have a, a little bit of alfalfa, maybe a cup and a half or so, uh, a cup and a half of beet shred, a little bit of azos, some worm castings, and that's pretty much it. Not a lot of excitement in that bag, but it'll definitely put down some colonies and this stuff will get pretty extreme and ready to rock and roll within about 24 to 48 hours so the amino acid nutrients that I've put into this is fish I have a fish fertilizer maybe a half a cup not a whole bunch uh, and some, some kelp extract I use the liquid kelp it so just to add a little bit of action to it oh yeah let's look at our EC we got that EC pulled out turn that bad boy on I like this meter because it can do liquid and soil so yeah, we're pretty much in line. 0.3 is what I figured. 21, nice. So we're about 70 degrees, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, it feels like 70 degrees. Yep, it tastes like compost tea. Oh, here we are at the rain barrel. We wanna check that out real quick, EC. Just to see what our rainwater's coming in at. 0.02 two to three pretty much nothing like you'd anticipate hey they're handsome yeah i see you stella's ruby plant still tiny it's all right i mean we've got a flower bed to fill all season right if that tomato up top here looking all right that's a crisp brown tomato it's got the best color of all the tomatoes it'll get bigger We'll get a nice one off of it. Getting some beans to sprout. Yeah, these are Vortex beans. They're like a green bean that's stringless. And you can just eat raw. My goodness, they're delicious. Should grow way more than that. But, of course, they're off our own collective seed. We'll put up a cattle panel or something between these tea posts and we'll have some green beans. Nobody cares about green beans. <laughs> Unless you're eating them. Yeah. The stop sign patch. Let's navigate our way to these plants. The beautiful birchette. I still have two of these gals. Almost called down yesterday. Just didn't. They'll be called down very shortly. Two to three days tops. What I'm watching at this point is secondary development. I want to see if one plant or another looks better in secondary growth. I have no real other differentiating factors between the two. I mean, one's a little bit longer. That doesn't mean anything. That's that's a day or two days worth of growth of ketchup. I'd rather have good, strong secondaries. They're both beautiful plants. I still think that between the two, I probably favor the one closest to me. We shall see, time will tell. The McCaslins, looking real nice up here. Really starting to come into their own. I actually have a fruit set on that one up there. Just a test fruit. We're going to take that gal off. These plants are still too small. I need to get good secondary development. It's like the same song and dance no matter what plant I'm looking at. Secondary development. Come on. And it'll come on. It's just going to take a little bit more time. The nitrogen's there. The soil temps just need to be there. 
few more quick comments about EC today. The meter I use is something I've used for season number two now. And I'm very accustomed to its readouts and I know how my plants look with certain readings. How accurate is it? I don't guess it really matters as long as it works for me and it makes sense. My recommendation is get a meter and play around with it. If you look online, every online source will tell you that you're going to want an EC of the soil being about a 1 to 1.2 during a vegetative stage and even higher during a flowering and fruiting stage. So I'd say that that may translate to certain meters, but obviously for mine, I didn't feel like it, it did. I felt like it really took a lot to get up there and I put quite a bit of everything on my soil to get it properly balanced this year. So I know my EC's there, especially at depth. Uh, every rain that you get, and we got a nice rain today, is going to help drive nutrients, especially electrically conductive nutrients that are soluble in soil uh, down deeper. So to replace what I had up in the top three inch column of soil that got washed down into the fourth and fifth and sixth inch column of soil and subsequently lower, I'm gonna have to hit with more nutrients. It's like a continual leach. Uh, as nutrients do leach, we all know that. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a basis to go off of. It's always better to err on the side of caution and not to blow up a plant trying to put down a three EC on your plants as, to, as opposed to just taking it easy and maybe shooting for that 0.8 or maybe even that one in your soil. As for solution, like I said, 0.5 is reasonable. That translates to about I don't know, 250 to 300 parts per million of whatever nutrient or combination of the nutrients you're trying to put on. The good rule of thumb is one EC is about 500 to 600 parts per million. So take that into account whenever you're mixing up solution, whether to put on foliar or to put on a drench or your drip lines even, especially foliar. You know, if you've got an EC of two and you're running at foliar and not rinsing it off, you might run into issues. So just thoughts to think about. I hope this video is helpful. If nothing else, I hope it's, it's confusing and you do your own research and realize that Doc's crazy. Well, that's a wrap for this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was a little bit more educational this time around. My numbers will probably be different from other folks. I know Travis will probably watch it and go, Doc, it's not enough. And he's right. His fruit are big, my fruit are small, but they're healthy and they're happy and it works for me. And that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to find things that work for you and better that and better your grow, get bigger fruit to scale. Today's the 29th, like I said, the 31st is the cutoff time for pumpkin moors. If you're not on team dock, Get on another team. Get on Team Jay. Jay kind of cut himself short saying, oh, I only have one competition plant. That's it, that's it. Ruby came in second place last year against Jacob. This is a small plant, maybe 300 square foot of foliage on a good day. Yeah, so don't, don't cut Jay out like he's cutting himself out. Plus, the whole point of this is getting on teams, getting free seeds. You're gonna get free seeds from me you're gonna get you're gonna get some nice pumpkin seeds. Probably get some ruby seeds. You're gonna get some cool seeds. Now, if you get Jay and you're on his team, and he doesn't have a lot of teammates, this guy wins or gives out free seeds. Man, you're gonna get a package of all sorts of great seeds. Jay grows a little bit of everything. So if you like to grow a little bit of everything, maybe that's your team. Scott Bayou has had great seeds in the past. You know, he had uh, the 20. 376 by you that's a good seed the 1883 that grew data really beautiful blaze orange fruit he's a great team jeff had the state's record for ohio you know, 2195 and it'll produce a heavy lunker of a fruit and he's grown some beautiful squash jeff has so if you like squash seeds maybe that's the team to be on either way whatever you pick whoever you pick pick somebody it's free it's fun and there's a chance to get some seeds as always, thanks for watching, folks. Questions, comments, hit me up. Doc out.